Yo, what up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Low Five Gaming. It's our monthly backlog book club featuring myself, Alex, and my co-host and brother, Luke. What's up, Luke? Too not much. How you doing, man? Oh, man, I'm living. I'm doing good. Uh, excited to be coming at the people again. Another backlog <laughs> low book five club, nighttime, man. nighttime, nighttime, low five. Oh, yeah. The low five <laughs> nighttime. The night vibes, dude. Yeah. The low and five bit- night vibes. Yep. Babies are asleep. Can't get can't can't get too rowdy up in here. No, this is dad. Just time, dude. just rowdy enough. Man, I gotta say, you're looking pretty good today. Sporting that Charlotte Hornet mm-hmm. starter jacket, mm-hmm. LA gear kicks, blinding lights on the bottom. Probably why you got those wraparound Oakleys, bro. Making it hard to read that Casio G Shock. Either way, the whole fit coming together with those cargo shorts. Pockets big enough for two Game Boys. Fuck yeah, dude. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a Pokey Trainer '90s kid, ready to go. Uh, I sort of get the references. It takes me a while, but uh, you know, I'm sort Dude, of you a remember? 90s baby, I'm enough of one to kind of get it. To have hand me down starter jackets, that was like my version of millennial lifestyle. <laughs> Dude, I was trying to think of all the, the no like... longer cool millennial or starter jackets to still pretty bitching starter jackets. <laughs> Man, is what we were used to. Ace had a fresh one. Pew, pew. Dude, mom got me the knock. It was like. I can't even remember what they're called. They were not starter jackets, though. It was like the poor people of starter jacket. It was like it was like it started with a P or something. I can't even remember. But it was I like I picked it out though. It was like, still tight. It was uh I had the um the Notre Dame Fighting Irish was the dude on there. So it was kind of fun, but it wasn't a starter jacket. Aaron, our older brother, dude, he had a Lakers one that I, I ended up acquiring, kind of, or I just wore to school a couple times. That one was pretty dope. Stole it a few times before it was reclaimed. <laughs> I was pretty young, dude. I was pretty young at the time. And it was funny because Aaron, he's older than, you know, quite a bit older than we are. Not quite. Well, yeah, so decent much older, dude. <laughs> yeah, old man over there. Yeah, but uh, dogs. So I was wearing his his Lakers starter jacket. This uh, book of matches fell out, dude. And I was like, I panicked because cigars, dude? <laughs> I don't know what the fuck he was doing. But I was like, I was just a little kid, bro. So like. <laughs> A pack of matches over at St. James School. Oh, I was, I was, I was worried. What a bad kid, dude! Fucking I know psychopath that you were. I know. Hoodlum. Dude, I had a lot of fun uh, thinking of all these these '90s apparel references. You probably don't remember L.A. Gear Kicks, dude. That was a deep. That was a deep reference. You remember the no, L.A. Gears? The, the Shining Lights. I had no idea. Casio G Shocks are still dope, though. So that's not even mm-hmm. from Stog. They're mm-hmm. still glorious. The wraparound Oakleys don't know that. It was really just the starter jacket and being specific Charlotte Hornets and uh, the G Shocks <laughs> yeah. and the double Game Boys because, of course. Yes, I thought I thought about going Jinko, but I didn't feel like that was your vibe, man. Mm, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Although uh, oh. I am married, so all cargo shorts are banned in the house. Dude, I've been told I can't wear cargo shorts either. That's it's an atrocity. Yeah, I kind of want to buy a really been... gaudy pair out of protest. <laughs> Get them at like Menards or some shit so they're extra practical and shit. Shout out to the homie Severson. Dude, Severson, I went to the movies this years ago, but he had a pair of cargo shorts on. Dude, he put like some Chick-fil-A in his pockets <laughs> and smuggled it into the theater. I was like, this is fucking awesome. I can imagine a delightfully <laughs> smug face as he takes his chicken sandwich out of his cargo shorts. So I like it. Yes. So what's up with the silly nineties and pale references, dude? We're we're what playing up, Game bro? Boy, man. We're mm, playing yeah. Game Boy back to the nineties. I didn't know games 2000s. other than Pokemon were released on the Game Boy, if I'm gonna be honest. Dude, so many. Oh you're just playing with me right now. You I know that you for sure. <laughs> yeah. It's like partially true though. It's like ninety five percent of my Game Boy usage is uh, you know Pokemon dude. and five percent is probably Mario stuff. It's so. a solid game, bro. It's Pokemon's good. You know, it's great. Yeah. Great little RPG. They're still um, making the same one they made for the Game Boy, dude. Just yeah. <laughs> somewhat better graphics, kind of. Well, we didn't play Pokemon this time around, man. We played Pine Creek. And Pine Creek, although it be it for the Game Boy Color, it was made in 2021. It's yeah, pretty new. Fuck for you. New old tech. Dude, dude. I love it, man. There's yeah. this there's this whole community of people making new games on on old hardware and i'm here for it dude this episode episode number 33 of low five gaming i hope you sickos are ready for alex zone <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is for the loyal
<laughs> for sure. Is there like a like a catchy phrase, like a Metroidvania, would you, of uh, or Souls like or like genre type thing that you would describe the future retro? Man, future retro pro- is like probably the closest thing you can do. There's this whole like a lot of these games that dudes are creating for the Game Boy are built off of GB Studio, so like Game yeah. Boy Studio. GB Studio, where, maybe? I just made that up. <laughs> <sighs> Close enough, dude. If you Google it, you'll but, get there. So that's crazy. I'm sure. Right? I'm sure. Yeah. But, dude, they like it's not just the Game Boy, though. I haven't dabbled a whole bunch, but like I do, I'm well aware of uh, there's some folks that are creating this. <laughs> dude, looks, like I said, this is a sicko Alex hour, but there's a shmup mm-hmm. that's coming out this year, dude, for the Genesis that I'm like salivating over. Uh, so get there's some more chan to hear this shit, dude. What's up? <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, let me see. There's also like, you know, occasionally some some of these publishers that do like the, you know, physical media stuff will release or do re-releases to Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, uh, Nintendo. I mean, there's a love for it, man. Like one of the things I love about gaming is that that physical media aspect. I obviously have a bunch of digital games, too, and uh, I'll play whatever, dude, but. Yeah. But it's fun. It's fun to have. It's fun to have those physical pieces, those relics. Well, and, uh, to I, that you can play it on current tech too. Totally. I played it on my analog pocket, which is another sicko <laughs> mode Game Boy Hour. Yeah. But uh, you know, that's like the. It's basically this uh, souped up Game Boy that came out <clears throat> total 2020. It's like 20, literally a future more, retro machine. New. So exactly. Dude, it's and it's it was dude. That thing is it's fun. It's fun to play the new games on there, old games on there, and this game. I mean, they have the the physical cart, which I did purchase and that I own as part of my collection. Is one of the reasons that I wanted to play this one is to you know work through that backlog. Uh, but you're able to play it on your Steam Deck, Steamy D, yeah. A and B are switched because it has the Game Boy out. So my mm, dumb ass, yeah. that took me at least like two seconds to three minutes to figure <laughs> out. But other than that, dude, it was a very smooth and enjoyable experience. Except for um, the wife did not love the crunchy Game Boy tunes at nine o'clock at night right next to her in bed. But other times <laughs> of the day, it sounded great and fun. You're buck wild. You don't put headphones on? <laughs> <laughs> Nah, dude, I was listening to it raw in the atmosphere. My, dude. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> my steamy D, dude. I whip it out and everyone gets to see and hear it, dude. <laughs> I mean, I'm into it, bro, but yeah, if you're in bed, you got to have those headphones on, man. You yeah, got to have a long marriage. You gotta pay, yeah, fa- follow my OnlyFans for that type of true content if you want to watch me stream all that. But I cam it. It's not necessarily streaming, but that's just like a different thing. But anyway, what's up? Yeah, so this this game is available. The physical copy, like I said, you can also play it uh, in your browser via via the publisher uh, Carmelo Electronics HIO or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Icho for fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can play it there and you can also you can also purchase the ROM too. And this is your this is your foray into uh into the ROM world, dude. This is your yeah, first purchase, time. Purchase purchase this ROM if you like. Please yeah, you can say that one more time. Yeah, but but yeah. this is the first time you've done any emulation. Or yeah, at least in your hands. you set it up for me because I'm a noob and I don't want to learn. <laughs> Dude, I, I said that real nice too. You, you're you're benefiting from someone who's fucked around with this ship way too much and has tweaked all the settings to make it look as close to the original experience as possible. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, no. So you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, this is Al's attempt to get me to buy crates with him, but <laughs> that's what this is leading. <laughs> Dude, anyway, I'm no, a big shader really boy, man. I can't believe it. it. There's these people out here playing Game Boy stuff with, and they just go like the pure, like vanilla, like clean pixel thing. I'm like, no, you got to throw some shaders on there. You got to get the vibe going. Ugh. I can't so this tell is what you I what. sound like when I'm lecturing my friends about how fun record collecting is. This is, this is it. <laughs> uh, when they're like Spotify, and I'm like, no, <laughs> it's <a> shame. <laughs> uh, but Pine Creek, man, you ready? You ready for my little excerpt? Mm, yeah, no, excited. Let's write it in, man, and tell the people about Pine Creek. In the quaint town of Pine Creek, tranquility is shattered by a dark mystery. The disappearance of a young girl feared to be the latest victim of ritual killings rumored to be orchestrated by a cult. Embark on a journey to uncover the sinister truth behind the unsettling crimes. Pine Creek is not just an adventure game, it's a narrative-rich exploration into life, death, 
and the spaces in between. Released in October of 2021 for the Game Boy and Game Boy Color, this game marries nostalgia with contemporary storytelling. Crafted by Carmelo Electronics under the creative direction of Marco and published by Incubate Games. Pine Creek is accessible via any Game Boy emulator and original hardware through a flash cart, and it is developed using GB Studio. Uh, Alex, after <laughs> not editing that, hit that uh, one take on like some Nas uh, shit right there. But anyway, <laughs> that uh, was yeah, one so take. Mm-hmm. Your brother ropes you into uh, <laughs> playing his very niche uh, style Game Boy games, which are dope, but then it's like mad fucking adult. <laughs> Surprisingly, like, got a morbid. <laughs> It was tight, but look at you. Strange vibes all over the place, man. Dude, honestly. So this one, I've been into like Game Boy scene for for quite some time. I mean, since I was a kid, really, but I really started to get back into it in like 2017, 2018. I started collecting for it because I heard about that analog pocket. I was reading retro, like retro whatever magazine, and they had a big old article on the analog pocket, and that got me interested in digging out some mild stuff. And I started like getting into the whole like mod scene. I started digging out some of my like old games and I just started to fall in love with Game Boy again, dude. And I just was salivating over this analog pocket. And in the meantime, I started to learn about these new games that folks were making and Pine Creek's been on my shelf for a little bit. So I really was excited to have the opportunity to, to give it a whirl. And I knew that it was going to be kind of a weird hang, dude. It's definitely, I mean, it's got dark material in it. It it opens up with the, like, there's basically a disclaimer, (laughs) Yeah, well, it's funny. I like took that almost as like sarcasm. I didn't take it literally. Uh, so then, when it did get dark, I was like, "Oh God!" But I'm trying right. to like think of the vocab word. It like uh, the cartoony, like literally. I said Pokemon earlier, but like it it has like the Pokemon aesthetic, and it's got like the very fun music. Although sometimes music is like spooky, but it's that fun Game mm-hmm. Boy music, <laughs> and, and it belies. I think is the word I'm looking for. It really belies the fact that it's actually very dark, and you gets there, and you're like, "Whoa." <laughs> right so we'll jump into the crazy. story a little bit later but i do think that you know those dark themes that are happening in this game are i don't want to say offset because it's not like they are are erased or anything but it's it's balanced with mm-hmm. <clears throat> this like almost pokemon vibe the you know that's part of like gb studio like there's a lot of assets that have that pokemon look for those that are familiar with the original pokemon games so you have that kind of uh like what would you it's like that top down it's very cute for lack of a better you know a better description but there's like there's a cuteness to it maybe it's cute but it's also like it's familiar and the familiarity is attached to cute properties so like um you know and then it's just the lightness of like the music even though once again it can be kind of like spooky but it's you know it's hard to be like scary it's it's more of like a crunchy little spooky pop <laughs> going through the town the dialogue I mean, in this game is top notch in yeah, my opinion Raider had a lot of fun with it and, uh, <laughs> there's like a lot of goofy moments to laugh at so it's just like almost like you're taking on this fun little spooky ride that's like no dude this fuck serious and you're like oh my god <laughs> that's odd to describe it so this is one of those adventure mystery games that has multiple endings. And I'm and let's talk about the endings uh, later on. But I'm curious, how much time did you put into this game and how many playthroughs? How many endings did you get? I want to say I played it in three separate sittings. I'd almost do, it's like a three-day cycle, right? So I'd do mm, like... Five days day. in total, but... Okay. Well, I did it in three sittings. And the first time I just did a day and then it was like one or two days and then I finished her up. Because the last one is actually pretty fast, so I feel like the last two, three days kind of are all in an intense little pack, where the first two days are longer. Uh, but I did it two, three hours. That's about right. I did it uh, in the same amount of time, but I have I went for three different endings. So that's another thing about these these little well, short plays. Once you plays. know the path, yeah, you can right. probably rip through it pretty fast and once you know the different beats to it. And when I went around, especially on my first playthrough, it probably took me maybe three-plus hours because I was super wrapped up and just poking everything, dude, like talking to every NPC, uh, seeing what they had to say, going around, kind of figuring out what was happening. And uh, I had a lot of fun doing that. And then exactly the second time I went through, you can kind of streamline it because you know where to go. You know what to do. The like more mysterious parts that you're figuring out or the more like, you know, I wouldn't even call them puzzles really, but there's it's like more than a fetch quest but it's like basically a fetch quest in a way like you have to go do certain things to be able to unlock the next part or the next part Mm -hmm. of the journey right 
Mm -hmm. Uh, So once you know what those are, you can do it pretty rapidly. But I was interested to see what some of the different outcomes might be. So I did a couple different playthroughs. (laughs) And and, uh, that's another cool thing about these games is there's not like crazy replayability, you know, factor to them. But it's super interesting to me to see those different outcomes. And I like to, you know, there are games like that. You look at your Witcher 3 or whatever that has huge game with these, you know, you can take different paths, right? But man, you got to replay Witcher 3 to see what that other ending was going to be. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, some people do. Uh, maybe someday I will. But that's a that's a 40 hour commitment, bro. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's cool replayability and it's fast and light enough. So it's, it's a feature. Um, aren't the endings not radically different though? It's just kind of like you get different details about different characters or. Yeah. And we'll go, we'll, we'll hit the spoiler section later and kind of talk about that a little bit, but yes, this one, this particular game, the endings aren't super, they don't branch off crazily like some of the other games in this little genre and realm that I've played cool the game is definitely so to describe the style of game it's kind of like a little just a quick little like dialogue adventure i'd say you have different voice like choices but it's more about what type of witty interaction you want to have because the writing is really sharp in it and really fun and goofy so you're kind of just like roaming around trying to just like solve a little mystery um, talking to people, interacting with a few objects, you know, fetching, finding something here to go at over there. How else would you describe it? Or just the characters even? No, that's, I mean, that's right on, man. Like you wake up, it's kind of that, uh, that Game Boy trope of, uh, you know, you see it in Zelda and a lot of different other uh, games of the era, yeah, but you wake up. just like the bedroom in Pokemon. I feel like it was homage to that, especially because you can go play that little game over there and it's <laughs> a little Totally. Fun. So you, you so yeah. So you're... That game, that's just so funny. Oh, man, it's great stuff. But you wake up and the first thing you do, you start poking around your room. Right. And and dude, that <laughs> that game, there's so many little like super niche and super like esoteric like inclusions in this game that just like bloom. That's like what really did it for me is like uh, Marco, the developer of this game. He interjected a lot of himself into it. And I think that's what really elevates this game to the next level, dude. Right off the bat as you're you wake up as your character in the, your bedroom and there's like a little uh, Super Nintendo on the ground, and you can go, you can go play it, dude. And what's the name of that game called? Do you remember? No, but it's pretty ridiculous, um, and that's why I don't remember it. It's awesome. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> Heroes of Perestroika, dude. So it's like this super, <laughs> it's like this super like Soviet era. What themed game is it? It's not Gorbachev, is it? Or is it? No, it's like uh, uh, whoever was before Gorbachev. Like, uh, it, doesn't so, it doesn't matter, dude. And it's like it's like uh, economic reform, and then there, there's unrest in this region, like attacking you back. And it's it's very specific. I found that so obscure, and dude, it was great, and it was set up like Pokemon, like it was like a Pokemon battle, it was quite so, literally, yeah. Dude, that's which is like, you know, it's one of those meta, like solid meta jokes. Like, you know, I think Marco, the developer, was like leaning into the fact that he realizes that there's this, you know, Pokemon vibe going to the game. You don't battle like you do in Pokemon, but the way you traverse the map is very Pokemon esque. So to have that, like, have that inclusion was this. So it was like a solid little game. And the character at the end, he was like, this game sucks. And I was like, ah, well, the game kind of dope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I should mention your character. Your character's name is Adso, by the way. So the main character is Adso. That's as you play as, and you you wake up in Adso's room. You kind of go around, head downstairs, and your sister down there. I think at the beginning. Yeah, you can have some aggressive back and forth with clearly, <laughs> clearly some sibling tension. Dude, it's great, and like right off the bat, man, the, that dialogue is just it's just super good, and it's just it's again, it's very like offsetting almost. It's like, you're like, wait a second, this is a Game Boy game because they swear. They say silly stuff and you, you have some choices or whatever to make uh, and you head out and then kind of learn about that thing that I mentioned in the our little uh, our brief little story or whatever of Pine Creek. You find out that there's been this uh, you don't know if it's a murder or kidnapping, Correct. but all of a sudden like this like cool little jaunt that you're having through town like <laughs> it goes sour pretty quickly uh, because you find out one of your best friends is is fucking missing or dead. Yeah, with uh <laughs> Dude, the intro I, to the I game, should've, I should have taken yeah. it seriously because the intro to the game is this like little cutscene, uh, which is graphic. <laughs> I don't know if you want to spoil that. I feel like it's graphic enough to to not spoil it just yet. 
but that's what you start it with. So it's like this retro old school familiar graphics, but then kind of a lifelike oddly enough. Sure. <laughs> little cut scene and i was like okay the fuck dude because i didn't yeah, i almost forgot about it was that a horror game but i you know i didn't i guess i didn't know what to expect then it opened with that and i was like okay cool dude, i forgot <laughs> about that creepy. right after the warning it goes in and and, and this isn't yeah. super spoilery because it's just the beginning of the game and there's a bunch of there's thumbnails all over the internet of it but it's basically it's it's a bloody knife and then someone's like cut off finger and then you've got a pentagram and so that's like what this game starts with. And you're just kind of like, wait, what? And then you end up in that room we're describing. And it's it's like this major shift where it's like, wait, you just like, I even forgot to bring it up because it, it totally pulls you from that and then places you back into this like quaint little town. Doo-doo-doo. But then you end up out. <laughs> having a little <laughs> yeah. adventure time. Yeah. Before we go into too much of the story, I want to talk a little bit more about, you know, this, uh, the dialogue that I keep talking about. Then just kind of the silly things you can do is like go to the go to the arcade. I had a lot of fun with that, and I want to hear about your experience with the arcade. And then just your your exploration of the actual Pine Creek and then Apricot City, which is this neighboring city that you can take the train to. So I'm, I'm curious about after you left your house, like how did you how did you go about your gameplay? Well, you have like some missions in a little notebook, which I appreciated, mm-hmm. but also there wasn't there wasn't a map, was there? There's not a map. So, but it was, so I, that made me a little nervous. But and then the first place I had to go was like really close. So that made it easier. And then I was just kind of booping around, man. <laughs> I don't, right. It's like you're poking at things. Like it's like when the gameplay isn't really like, it's not gamey as much as you go up and you talk to people and you just kind of figure out where to go next. It, it reminds me a lot of not just like Game Boy games, actually more so like the old, old computer games that you would just like randomly have access to or like you're just trying to like figure out what the environment has in store for you. So that's just kind of how I was. And then towards the end, I actually got super impatient and looked some things up because I am a child. Oh, you? Yeah. <laughs> that's fun. Spoiler uh, so one of the things is kind of a fun, there's a, an arcade that the building is an arcade on the top floor or something like that. And then there's um like, it's a Photoshop on the, the bottom floor. Mm-hmm. Uh, so one of your buddies, he works at the Photoshop, but upstairs is the arcade and you can go in the arcade and there's actually some playable cabinets. Once again, it's like the nineties. So there's a reason for a Photoshop. True, right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we've explicitly mentioned that outside of your nice intro about starter jackets and G-Shocks, but yeah, it definitely takes the place 90s, in the nineties. Yeah. I know it's, Dude, it's funny it was because late, but it's almost like kind of gives you that kind of campy horror vibe then tied to an era. So similar, totally. similar idea, but yeah, continue. I'm not, uh, I've never been like a big, I've never gone out and like, I mean, I've go to arcades like barcades and stuff now, but I didn't like grow up in the arcades, but I still have like a certain sense of nostalgia for them. I think they're really cool. And I'm, I just like, I'm just, I'm like kind of semi obsessed with like arcade culture, right? Even though I didn't get to partake. So, like, yeah, the fact that this game had that in there. By. Got it. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of cool. But it, uh, immediately you go and you talk to, you don't have any money. So you go to play and they're like, oh, you don't have any money. So you go talk to the, the arcade, like, worker, owner, whatever. And he sends you on a fetch quest to the church and you have to deliver this letter, <laughs> right? But it, he tells you not to open it. And then when you leave the arcade, Which right away, I wouldn't know what happens, <laughs> you piece of shit. Dude. Bro, dude, I fucking, so I did. And then, like, long story short, I wasn't able to play any arcade games. So, so when I did my second replay, I made sure to be a little bit more, uh, what do you say, uh, honest? No, there's a better word. <laughs> it's not even true, dude. You did it in the first timeline. Therefore, you already knew what happened. So you're just a bad person at each timeline, <laughs> even if you made the right decision. Continue, though. Oh, man. Well, I'm glad that I did go back and was able to play those games because there's a silly Pong game. You that actually you, mentioned you in players. the Discord you were banned from the... Uh... <laughs> yeah, they banned me from the arcade. I wasn't only so able to I play it. I knew that anything. heading in, so I was like, I'm not going to read this letter. It's going to get me banned. Oh, uh, see. <laughs> see, so I, I was on my high horse, but I'm not a piece of shit, too. I would have read it. Yeah, dude, I totally read it, and they wouldn't let me play the games. And the So the <laughs> games in there, you can play that uh, Heroes of Prestrokia again. Uh, which is fun, but you know you already did that in your rooms or whatever. It's and the then same it has, joke. There's no like new layers to that joke. It's like one excellent joke. So yeah, it's just there again. Right, right. Uh, you might as well you reuse an assets. It's whatever. But <laughs> yeah, it belongs in the arcade for sure. But then there's a uh, pong, so you can play pong, 
uh, but it's two player pong. So you'd have to like get another person in real life and then use the D pad and the AB button to go up and down with your pong paddles. Uh, I did not, man. No, I did not. Did you? No. (laughs) Right on. The the other game, which I thought was such a great reference, dude, is my there is an my dinner with Andre cabinet. <laughs> Did you check that one out? I watched it for mm-hmm. longer than I should have because I was deeply confused about what movie this was, and I feel like it might get used for a meme, or maybe I just know that actor. But I was like, what's happening here? Yeah, so the actors are pretty famous, and the it's like a big like art house film, which I didn't know anything about prior to this game, but it's also. It's, <laughs> It's a Simpsons reference as well. So mm-hmm. there's a there's a Simpsons episode where Martin is like at the arcade or something and it's just like one button and all you can do on this game is just do like keep reading. Oh. <laughs> so it's like I had the opportunity to talk to Marco, the, the publisher of this, and I was like, what is up with this inclusion? I have to know. And he was like, well, it's like a Simpsons thing. I was like, ah, oh, shit, that, that makes sense. That's, <laughs> that's cool. It is cool. I love that that's in there, man. It's like those little, like weird little things that he's included. And so much of that is like, those are some pretty obvious examples, but then there's so much of like his life and his humor and just different stuff shows up in, in the, the chats you have with the different NPCs. Uh, and there's like 50 of them, dude. And I know that GB studio has like a limit with how many assets you can have, like in certain screens and whatever, but okay. dude, to have like, to have, you know, 50 sets of dialogue, you know, that changes every day, dude, that took a lot of time. <laughs> God, yeah. So you had multiple playthroughs and you'd talk to different people every day. I was just kind of always on my shit, like figuring out what was going on next. But I guess if you know that, it's pretty respectable to go back and see like different things that change. That's cool. Yeah. Well, the first playthrough, I talked to like everybody every single day that I could run into just to see what they had to say. The second and third playthrough, I would skip mm. folks because it's like I kind of knew what I was trying to do. I was more interested in seeing the ending. But yeah, as I, as I just mentioned to you, like I had the opportunity to talk with Marco, uh, which is super cool. Folks would have been able to have the opportunity to listen to that podcast. Uh, if you didn't, go check it out. Super cool dude. And it was great to learn a whole bunch about uh, his experience making this game. Really, it was uh, it was really eye opening and cool to see. And I think that as I played this game, I started to notice there's just different things in it that I just realized that like this is like totally the publisher coming out and like showing some personal flavor. And I think that's what really elevated this game above, you know, where it would have been if it was just a straight up you know, murder mystery kind of vanilla. But he added so much of himself into it. And I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, so, folks, go if you haven't already, go check out that interview with Marco because it's a cool dude. And it was a lot of fun for me to learn about his experience making this game. Hell yeah. The comedy and the skill in the writing definitely helps offset the uh, more intensity of the story, for sure. Offset's the wrong word. I like how you said balanced earlier. Right. And with that, dude, I think we should give folks who haven't played this the opportunity to skip forward to, I'll insert a little time here. 50 minutes, 18 seconds. 5018. Otherwise, you know, you can you can stick around for some spoilers, but I want to hear about I want to hear about how this game ended for you and how you got there, bro. OK, <clears throat> so I did most of the mystery edge and figuring things out on my own. But when you have to what's it called? The decoding of the pentagram and the symbols. You like actually wrote that out on a notebook, didn't you? Yeah, dog. I got. I sure did. <laughs> That's pretty anal and unnecessary, but also pretty. Cool. Nah, dude. Oh. It was like pretty. It was pretty necessary for trying to decipher that shit. <laughs> that's yeah. That's fair. I. It was, was a, just, is it cryptography? Is that what that's called? Um. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. Hey, it sounds good to me, dude. I like. <laughs> I'm in such a video game thing. I just thought that like. I would be initiated some sort of another screen somewhere by talking to somebody Hmm. or like looking at it in my house or something. So I was actually really confused as to where I was supposed to go. And it turns out I was supposed to decode that myself uh, and then go to that place. And it tells you exactly where to go. But my dumb ass had to look that up. So shouts out to people who help people out on the internet. That was cool. (laughs) Um, But I was like, I kind of felt dumb and then a little bad because that's like cool. It's like cool writing and cool like story design, right? To actually do that. So I knew later when I have to 
get that book and like all the num- like words were highlighted. I like knew to put that together and mm-hmm. like come up with a little code to figure out where I was going. But how about you? You, see, you understood it was a notebook assignment, so you did a better job. <laughs> yeah. So as you're, as you're going through and talking to folks throughout this game, uh, basically they'll, they'll be little problems. So when you, when you start a dialogue with somebody, they'll kind of give you an idea of what the next thing to do is. So you go do that. Uh, and you end up finding your way into the adjacent town to Pine Creek, which is Apricot city. So you take, you end up like, you have to do this whole thing. You end up getting a train pass and you head to Apricot city and you go to the black cat lounge or something like that. Deliver pizzas. And those dudes stiff you. That's right. Ages and those cocks. <laughs> <laughs> that's right like so you end up just feel bad for you and give you money yeah because you had to earn you had to earn the money to buy the train pass you couldn't just get the train pass to your dad jim <laughs> he like yeah. he makes you he makes you get a job at the new pizzeria that just opened or whatever so you go around you, you like slang your pizzas when you slang those pizzas you actually run into an npc one of them they deliver to you i can't remember his name or if he even had a name but it's this dude that's like out on this uh he's like on this overlook looking for mm-hmm. ufos yeah. apparently when i was talking to marco dude that's like a big uh i use like a lot of folks in mexico will catch that reference it's like a very well-known like ufo searcher dude oh really <laughs> yeah so like i mean i thought the inclusion was fun i just thought it was weird but it's again more layers of that like when you talk cool to him, inclusion. UFOs swing by so he misses him dude i know he turns around to like get the pizza and he misses his ufos but it's fun to see man. that pizza like, you delivered to the church which oh man fuck that church um, yeah. that pizza you deliver actually sounded pretty good. It was like a weird, it was like some weird flavors, wasn't it? It was like blueberry, goat cheese, something pizza. Yeah, I can't remember everything that's on it, but that was <laughs> onions. I was like, man, I'd fucking yep. try. There's enough, <laughs> enough strange but bougie things on a pizza to eat together. I was cool with it, but fuck those pizza um, guys. I don't care if their pizza's tasty or exquisitely creative. They ain't paying enough, dude. I don't think he got to keep his tips. <laughs> yeah. So he quits right away, and then but you end up getting the you end up getting the the train pass, and you go to the Black Cat, which is this like kind of like occult bookstore, and you're also there you're you're sent there by one of your other friends because you're like your friend group that's it's Cass, uh, I want to say Kathy maybe, and then Judith, and Judith is the one that's missing, Ah uh, Karen, sorry, so Judith, Karen, Cass, and I, I think Karen like knows somebody at the Black Cat or something, I don't know, but you end up you end up going there to try and figure something out, uh. And you have to do a weird little puzzle. I think it's the most like obscure puzzle in the game. You have to go around and and kind of like do. You have to like read the different bookshelves. I What's did that? that on accident. I like read some of those things, and I thought it was just like different cultural references he was going for. So then she asks yeah. you for the code, and I right. did it wrong, and I was like, "What?" So then I just did the weirdest answer possible for each one, and that's actually the answer. <laughs> and it worked. Yeah, oh, that's funny. I didn't know that um, that was like a thing until later on. Oh, right on. But you end up you end up going in there and then there's like this secret garden where people have their little sex parties or whatever. And this is like all this it's all this weird shit, dude, that you're like, wait, is this a Game Boy game? Like, what the fuck are they talking about? Like, yeah, but it's like <laughs> luckily later on it helps the fact that you can't see anything. But I wasn't like fully aware it was like a weird sex party thing because it's like this top down Pokemon looking view. You can't Right. <laughs> it's even a lot to the imagination. <laughs> you like talk to some of the people in the garden, they're talking about like tantric sex and all that stuff and it's yeah. it's a red herring though like you know we put up the spoiler wall but but this whole black cat lounge is a, is a red herring right so you end up you go in in the back part of it there's uh there's another npc that you can talk to that brings you to that book that you're talking about so basically you're trying to decode this the thing that you found in judith's room like the pentagram deal and yeah. like you needed to read that so like and then you're able to you're able to look back and forth and try and figure out what it is. And if you decode it, it basically tells you to go to the pizzeria. But I, I thought I fucked up, dude, because like all the places are spelt like a little off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like pizzeria. Or, I don't remember. Mm-hmm. It was like something weird. And I was like, oh, man, I think I fucked it up. But pizza, I'm just going to go to the pizza place. You go to the yeah. pizza place and then you end up finding, I think, a note in the uh, in like that plant or something that yeah. wasn't there before planter that has uh that has a camera roll along with a couple excerpts not excerpts but um passage like what do they call it from the bible like what a passage from the bible like a little title for it or whatever we're born and raised some good catholic boys we should be able to figure this out (laughs) (laughs) i thought passages is fine though um because yeah but it wasn't the passage itself it was like the reference to it yeah. yeah 
which like which gives you the idea okay it's like i need to find a bible and figure out what these are you know and that's how the game works or whatever but as you go along dude there's different things and then I'm trying to think how you have much to find detail. a bible you do have to find a bible and then it's the wrong edition of the bible because you bring it to the actual priest who we'll get to in a minute and then <laughs> yeah. you go back to that bookstore to find a bible don't you or where do yeah, you it's a, so you need I can't remember the type of Bible it is, but like if you it turns out they like they only have the King James Bible or something at the church. Like so you need you need to get a different edition no, of the Bible it's from uh, your missing friend is the last person to buy it or check. Right. It out. So you find that out. So you go back to her house where the accident happened. You like sneak upstairs or talk to her dad or some shit. And that's how Maybe you, you find can poke it. around on her computer. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and you find the Bible. Highlighted passages are, yeah, mm-hmm. and there's also some code or whatever on the computer. Where does the clue lead you? Uh, that's going to lead you back to the city, yeah, the Love Hotel. Yeah, before the Love Hotel became the scene of grossness, it was really funny to look at the like vending machine and it'd be like dildos, lube, yeah, <laughs> condoms, furry handcuffs. Totally. I was like, what am I playing? Because once again, it just you feel like it's a Pokemon game or a game of that innocent time. <laughs> right. <laughs> to have goofy things like that in there is really funny. And then the homie working at the Love Hotel basically has a crush on the girl at the taco joint. <laughs> right? Yeah. So he wants you to go talk to her and then you find out or no, 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 she's at the sushi joint. And then Correct. but they you find out that she tacos. loves tacos. Yeah. Right, right, right. So then this dude like sends you on an errand to get her like tacos. Basically, he leaves, and then you're able to go because they don't let you go back into the yeah, back room of the local hotel. details because they have you like pick out the sauce and stuff that she mentions. <laughs> and I was like, is this gonna matter that I forgot if she takes just cilantro and onions or just onions? And no, like I was like, ah. <laughs> I know, man. I, I fretted about that too. I don't think it matters. It does, but it allows you. No, it just, and it, it just was annoying. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck. Dude, so it allows you to go back behind the counter and like into the rooms, man. And this is where this game, like, there was like little bits in this game where it was like, okay, kind of weird, like that intro with the knife and the finger and everything, creepy, you know. But it's like nothing was like super weird. But then when you punch it in the code to go down into the basement of the hotel, dude, I also poked around like upstairs and there's some silly shit going on upstairs, like you know, kind of. Uh, like, oh, you I did not. I yeah. Known. There's like closed rooms and then you can just like, there's this weird stuff going on, like weird, but like kind of funny, kind of what you'd expect in like Cheeky. basically a sex hotel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but then you go downstairs, dude, and that was not what I expected. That's like, that shit actually, like this is a Game Boy game that was like fairly light with some dark themes. So they're like almost, wa- like I want to, like I said, I don't want to call them wash away, but it's like, you know, it, it was like acceptable. But then all of a sudden you, <laughs> dude, it like, it got real dark real quick. Yeah, and I mean, with the animations, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on with some of them. But like, basically, due to the descriptions that you get, like, in when you get kidnapped in like a minute, um, it's like a is it a torture thing? Is it just like what was? This, how would you? Yeah, it's like a sex trafficking thing for a little yeah. bit, like basically abducting little girls and like just doing you know pretty unimaginable stuff with them down and it's like each room's got a kind of a different thing they've got a, there's even like a couple of the girls are down there and like there's like a camera down there with on one of them and then there's like one where there's like a bed and there's like a bunch of blood and stuff it's just like it's not a good scene it's it's yeah. like this is all of a sudden you're like playing through this game like having some cheeky dialogue with a lot of folks there's some elements of darkness but then you you kind of like crack this crack this mystery find yourself down in this basement and it's like it's, it's like kind of the opposite of a Scooby Doo ending where you just like roll up and like rip <laughs> off the mask. It's like no, you've actually like come to think of it, like Scooby Doo, they never like encountered anything like gross. No, <laughs> it's, it's, it's always such figured out goofy crimes to get off this property so they could sell it or something. But it's never like a <laughs> totally. real real issue. And then there's some uh, <laughs> as you as you progress through this basement, you enter a room that's a completely dark. You can tell there's like a little light switch, so you have to kind of navigate through a little maze or whatever. A little and stress then you end up in the Exactly. <laughs> yep. Uh, but then you end up and in the final room. Was gonna happen. Light doesn't turn on, but yeah. then it does turn on, 
and dude you it's like another like it was a twist that i did not expect like you get you get captured i was like shit man like i thought i'd be able to fight or something but they captured yeah, your you. phone goes off and your body oh, that's right developing pictures like as you walked in that's right that's right yeah lot. so the camera roll that you yeah. found or whatever you get the call and he's like what the this shit's fucked up dude like because it's like you know a bunch of tied up girls being tortured or whatever and he's like this is fucking fucked up and then all of a sudden you all of a sudden the fucking police officer pops in on you like the dick police officer there's a bunch of police officers in this game but the dick one like pops in and basically ties you up and it's like shit <laughs> is this shit gonna end for adso yeah so it's like a trafficking pedo cult operation not right. even a cult. I guess that was just a that was a cover from the lady. That was a red herring as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's her dad, is, oddly enough, dude. Dude, and, I know uh, that shit. Was like that got me too. And this is this is where the uh, the multiple endings. This is where the uh, things okay. fork, depending on some of the decisions that you made throughout the game. Uh, so for me, when I walked in, it was the woman who owned like the owner of the Black Cat bookstore or whatever it is. In, in Pine City, not Pine City, Apricot City. Mm-hmm. Like she actually, like for whatever reason, I can't remember how the dialogue exactly went, but she comes in with the lady cop and they bust it down. Like they they save you. Right? So who saved you? Same. Okay. So you you were so what that means is you were truthful to the folks at at the Black Cat bookstore. Mm-hmm. Uh and you also made it, and you also like had some other basically you were truthful throughout and i can't remember what other decisions you had to make uh you didn't talk to tim that's one thing tim's like this like racist like hillbilly um, i did talk to him but i just accused him of doing it and he got really mad at me and stormed off and uh, okay see i did that in my first play there too so we had the our our first ending or the ending that you got is the ending that i got the first time so I was interested in trying to figure out a different path. And I ended up, if you talk to Tim and you don't shut him out throughout and you have to do, you have to do late, you have to like lie to the ladies of the black hat and do some other things. But my second playthrough, Oh, you end up, uh, by the way, <laughs> the last time that's an opportunity you're hanging out with Tim, the racist dude. Uh, he's like super, he's on a bender or whatever. And he needs some beer. So you go like get him some beer and he passes out and you can go choose one of his weapons. And he's got a grenade, a knife, and a gun. Yeah. And I grabbed the I grabbed the knife. So my second my second ending that I got, uh, I basically Tim busts in. He's like, "Hey, you dick! You like stole my knife? I'm gonna kill you, and then I'm gonna kill these perverts." <laughs> <laughs> but then I think, and then you use the knife to like get out, and you actually go and stab. <laughs> I can't remember if you stabbed the priest or like I don't even think we mentioned that dude. You mentioned the dad, like Judas' dad is one of the dudes. The priest is one of the dudes and the dick cop are like the three people in this, like that are the ringleaders of this thing. Right. Yeah. Wild. Um, yeah. So it's like a semi happy ending, although Judith isn't there. So like you unravel like this mystery of this, of this cult is not actually a cult, but you unravel this mystery of this like weird sex ring that's going on in town. Uh, and then it, so it's she it's created the week. pentagram thing as like a, this is like a guise for you to figure it all out. Right exactly so it skips towards so like a week we keep calling kind of depressed. Cult, but i think they're just like a criminal pedo ring exactly so the the call yeah, the call thing clarify. is yep so as you you wake up you're like kind of you like wake up as as a x amount of days five days seven days something like that has passed uh and when you wake up you're kind of poking around town again talking to folks and like some people are like oh you're a hero and you're like i don't know i just like i was just trying to find my friend i just still haven't found her i almost died yeah right exactly <laughs> Uh, but then fast forward, there's a couple more things to figure out and you end up, you end up finding Judith, uh, cause she has you meet in the forest by this statue of, uh, the rape of Persephone or something like that. It's like this, uh, yeah, Greek myth thing. Right. You can actually check this thing out and has one of those cool cutscenes where the art of it is all done earlier in the game. But you yeah, end up going that there. way earlier, and I was like, "Why did he spend all this time making this? That's very strange." <laughs> right. the The statue is the the rape of Proserpina, I believe. But it, it it like it makes sense in whole. Like once you find out like what happened to Judith and like you know basically being abducted or whatever, are these girls being abducted? Like it makes sense to why that inclusion's there. She ends up like meeting you at the statue and kind of is like, yeah, I had to escape. 
And you, you have an option that because her hair is cut too. So you're like, what's up with your hair? And she's like, uh, they, she, it's like super sad, dude. She's like, they said they love my hair. So I like, I cut it all off. And yeah. you're like, Ooh. and you're like, what about your finger? Cause like at the beginning, that scene that we talked about, and she was like, yeah, I made like a rash decision. <laughs> it's yeah. like, um, but that was it. So like she did that whole like scene in a room to herself and then she ran away. So you find out that she ran away, but, um, she ends up getting help from the lady cop or the FBI or whoever it is that came in to help. And basically things are okay. It's not like a happy ending, but you find out that she's alive and things will be all right. <laughs> you disrupted a criminal enterprise. So that's true. That's you, true. You helped the world. It was just kind of gross. That's all. Indeed. And it's, it's, uh, you know, that's, that is the down and dirty of how the game works. There's, uh, there's different routes, but all the endings are going to be pretty similar with just some different flavors. I, like mm-hmm. I said, I did a three different endings. So there's a slightly different endings that you can have, but it all ends up being about the same ending just with some different flavor. Uh, but it's really about the journey in my opinion, in this game. Yeah. It's the style of game of dialogue. It's, it's an experience. It's dialogue. It's, adventure a little puzzle solving and then kind of pacing your way through a story just a quick little jump it's cool if you had to give a rating out of five pentagram points what are you giving this one whoa um as a good catholic boy i can't go to full five (laughs) um i'd say four yeah i'd say there's times where when i was figuring out what the game is and like how to properly interact with it if that makes sense i found Mm -hmm. it frustrating but once i kind of understood what I was, what kind of game it was and what I was supposed to be doing. Uh, I enjoyed it. And I thought, uh, I mean, the story is disturbing, but like, it's, it's good. Well-told story. Like it's a good little twist. And, uh, I like that the game boy game graphics are crude. So I don't have to have anything weird in my imagery. So it made a heavy story like that, uh, easier to take in, I guess. Um, so I just thought it was well done and it was really cool. And, uh, like this is really cool, but it's also like a pretty obscure niche type of game, dude. Totally. <laughs> so therefore, it doesn't get that full five. I would. Uh, I think you're about right, man. I, I also give it about four, four to five pentagram points. There we go. Uh, and I say that like it's it's a game that it really grew on me as I continued to play through it. Like I fell in love with it more and more because I was really like falling into like the cool stuff that I thought the developer was interjecting bits of himself into the game. And I really appreciated that. I really appreciated like all of the discussion with the NPCs and whatnot. And I talked to Marco, dude, he said that took four months, bro. Like, and the, you could Believe see it. that. Yeah. You could so, just like, rip it. You'd have to be no. thinking about different things people are doing and saying. So yeah, it's cool. Right. So it was one of those things where as I was playing it, I was able to give some of its like shortcomings a break because one, I knew it was an indie game. I knew it was made by one person. I think he had some help like on a couple of things uh, with one of his buddies or whatever, but basically it's one man shop. And, you know, like I, I have a, a lot of respect for that. And I thought the story was good. I thought it ended like pretty abruptly, but I was okay with that. And I also thought that there was like a couple of things in there that was just like, they weren't broken and I wouldn't even go as far as to call them bugs or whatever, but it was just like certain, there's certain things I did because I was doing so much poking around that like, for instance, when I did that, uh, you, we mentioned the, the fetch quest where you like deliver the letter or whatever you deliver the letter to the dude that's apprenticing at the church and that you're supposed to deliver a letter back or something. And you just aren't able to do that. And every time you go back and talk to that dude, he's like, are you going to deliver the letter or what? <laughs> and you just can't so like that kind of thing in there is like it, it doesn't like it's not it doesn't really affect the game that much but it's one of those things where it's like i wish that would have been just it could just use a little bit more polish there but overall dude four out of five that's a lot that's that's good points right there oh, that's great the only point i'm taking off is just it's a very niche <laughs> <laughs> totally and, outside, and i think that kind of niche, but it was still like once i understood <laughs> once again once i understood the assignment it was a lot easier to enjoy and a lot easier to notice uh what it was going for and appreciate it and with that dude i think my recommendation then you got my you got my rating my recommendation this game's for the game boy sickos bro (laughs) it's for the folks that love game boy and it's and it's also like culture totally i think it's like i mean you nailed it right there and i also think that it's like 
uh, for folks, you know, it's it's not a heavy lift. Uh, that's something that I really love about, you know, I love my big, like immersive game, but being able to place through something and then three hours, two to three hours, dude, like that hits it for me sometimes. I really love that. So if you're looking for a little jaunt, like through Pine Creek, check it out. Hell yeah. Right on, man. Let's take a little break. Come back here from our unsanctioned sponsor. This month's episode is brought to you unofficially in part by House Shoes. Mm. You got house Shoes, bro? No, uh, they got so ratty that they couldn't oh. even justify themselves. It's like that pair of socks that you hold on for too long. These house <laughs> shoes, I believe. Yeah, dude, I had them for so long. They were so sad and pathetic. But I, I'm a fan of some house shoes, and I'll wear them out the house. I'm wild like that. Oh, oh dog, you crazy. monster. They're called house shoes for a reason, bro. I know, I know, and I should keep them <laughs> sacred. But sometimes I love them so much, I, I hit them out in the streets, and I'm dirty. I'm not Dude, a pajama pants out. in public guy, but I will house shoes in public. There's there's a fine line, and that's that's about it, actually. Dude, that's holler at my boy Al Lauer. I had a pair of house shoes, slippies, mind you. So these are slippers, uh, little gum soles on them. Nice, great house shoes. It's fucking, I made a I made it a point not to let them touch the outdoors. They were purely for the house, right? Mm. This is when I was living at Beast Manor, and this kid with Al. <laughs> This kid puts on my slippies and goes outside to grab the paper. And I was like, dog, you have no idea. I cannot believe you did spoil my house shoes. <laughs> dude, he, he spoilt them on the fresh morning dew, dude. That's that's pretty rough. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I was like, Man. dog, what'd you just do? I keep my house shoes in the house. I try to at least. Those shoes, though, R.I.P. Why? Because didn't wear them out nearly as much as you did to yours that you're talking about. But when my boy Murph, RIP, he got a hold of those house shoes when he was just a little pup and uh, he tore those laces right off. Because <laughs> they're leather, bro. Relics of some things that were destroyed when my dog was a hooligan. That's <laughs> yeah. funny. Yeah. Uh, but those have since been replaced by a new pair of house shoes. They don't go outside. They're in the house and they're just cozy, dude. I love it. Mm-hmm. In the wintertime, when you're when your feet kind of cold, you slip on some house shoes. Wear some house yeah, shoes. Yeah, you got you got hard surfaces at your house now. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna have to get yourself a new pair. Cause I'm all carpet oh, here. God, that's what I was saying. So, yeah, I'm all carpet here. So it's too it's too warm in general mm. to really to really rock the house shoes like that. So uh it's the hard surfaces yeah. that really make the house shoes next level. So I'm, yes, you know, yeah. I'm also big into I'm not a break like, from house shoes. If I'm wearing shoes, tennis shoes or whatever, dude, I'm a socks person. Like I'm gonna be wearing socks. Like I'm not I'm not gonna just go willy nilly putting my bare ass foot into some shoes, right? Like most but of house shoes. shoes do. Yeah. Dude, well, house shoes like crazy. Are all the time, dude. Right, right, right. So that's just that's just what's up. You know, house shoes are made for that. You slip right I in there socks. and you go over there. I hate socks. Yeah. If I don't if I don't have to wear socks, I'm not gonna. So dude, yeah. that leads me that leads me to summertime. I love I love being sockless as well. Just ride, just riding, riding clean. You know, Getting those Shrek. But what do you do about house shoes in the summer? Feet's right up in your swamp, dude. But your what do you do about house shoes in the summer? I have an answer for this. Continue. Avoid my Shrek jokes. <laughs> yeah, flippy floppies, bro. Oh, you got to put on the flippy that. floppies. No, nah, I'm gonna give me some Crocs though, because you're too cool for Crocs, and I'm oh. finally not too cool for Crocs, and I've liberated myself. I'm gonna give me some Crocs, dude. All right, all right. You little boys got house shoes. Floppy (laughs) hybrid. Yeah, the babies got them, and they're cute and jealous. (laughs) Right on. Well, that's what's up, dude. Some house shoes. Hell yeah. Not giving us any money for this podcast? No. Unofficially supporting us, though. In our hearts. So do you actually have eight side quests, man, or is this a troll? No, I got them. Lord. They're like some of them are together, though. It's more like oh, four. Okay. Let's see your library, my guy. You ready for me to go? We, we, you going to hit me with a, a side quest intro? That was it. Me trolling. Try again. Give me something better. Dude, your side quest queue looks like Skyrim, where you have like 50 un played message or er, uh, missions so what's up with that what are we checking off of our uh to-do list here man 
Yes, sir. Well, we played a Game Boy game that we mentioned didn't take too long to beat, even though I played it a couple of times. So I had some opportunities to get my side quest on this month, brother. All right. All right, Hulk. Let's see what you got. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick off my side quest with NBA 2K. Yes, sure. I've been playing, but not as much as you might think. I finished my season, and I finished the playoffs. I, the T-Pups, they took it all, man, and I haven't played since. I fucking won the finals. But here's what happened, bro. Hmm. First of all, the West, I feel, is way stronger than the East. So the games leading up to the finals were a lot harder for me. I had to take down... I had to take down Denver. I had to take down uh, the Grizzlies. Is that who's out there? Who's job play for? No, the Grizzlies, yeah. He's hurt, so I guess in a video game he's not. So, yeah, okay. Well, I know Denver was tough. But anyways, I ended up Grizzlies playing against the hurt, Phillies, bro. Though. So in the finals, I played against the Phillies, which I was like, why Why the Philadelphia, like, why the 70s, the Phillies? <laughs> why the 76ers so fucking good in this game? And they're not that good. The Joel finals were kind of a breeze. Dude. You yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, he is good, but like, dude. But here's the here's why I bring this up, though. So here's why I bring this up. I win the finals. Finally, you put all this time in, and you play through a season. You play through the fucking Harris brother. Yeah, dude, I know the fucking seven pitchers <laughs> are fucking good. But like, here's the deal. Like, it was just that the games leading up to it were tougher. Like, I I, yeah. I just like you know mop the floor with them. But here's the deal. Fucking this game, you put all this time into playing out the season, even though I do a shortened season, and in the playoffs, I only do three-game series. But nonetheless, we had to play all those games. I fucking win the finals, and is doing the celebration cutscenes and everything, and then the 76ers, KJ Martin, gets interjected into my, like, <laughs> into my cutscenes, and he's celebrating with the T-Wolves, and he's holding the fucking championship trophy. You're like, and- get over here, you loser. Dude, <laughs> you're not only... Tonight. Hold our trophy while we party. Dude, and not only did he get to like party with the T Wolves, and he's just like doing this whole thing. He's not even like <laughs> a huge player for them. That's I know. Why it's like, obscure. and they give him they give him Finals MVP, dude. This <laughs> this game has him. They give him the Finals MVP, even though I fucking killed it with Ant, killed it with Carl. Like, dude, like my team, like the oh, I just couldn't believe it. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then and KJ Martin, these games have gone downhill. Dude. What are you talking dude, about? Man? KJ Martin runs off with my trophy, and then they gave him Finals MVP. I was like, "You gotta be fucking kidding me!" That's cool. <laughs> Twenty twenty four, great game, huh? So, I, what, dude? The game itself was great. I just couldn't believe it. I put all that time into mm-hmm. it. It's not like I, you know, you don't want this like. It's not like a story game where you expect some crazy ending. But come on, man! Like, give me a fucking cutscene that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. Uh, that's major side quest number one. I'm done with 2K for a while now. Uh, Hell Divers two, man. I caught I caught the fever. I uh, got to jump in and play with some homies over in the list off podcast. They got a thread over in dude, their they Discord. Got a car seat to carry Alex, dude. I heard you suck, dude. Ah, uh, dude, but they I did. I'm better now, man. I'm pretty good now. I'm not, I shouldn't say that. I'm not that good, but like I figured the game out. So those those dudes like good ups. They. Uh, they they definitely you know they show me the ropes, but now I've been playing. I've been playing. Eh, I think I probably got ten hours tops. Probably ten hours okay. in that game. You say, but playing with randos, dude. Say That's yeah, cool. and uh, it's cool playing with randos, dude. It's a fun game, but it's not as fun. Star trip, starship troopers guy. Jesus, mm-hmm. back in the day or no? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's a cool movie and like it was fun, but I'm I'm not like a diehard. I haven't watched it, but it's like I do love the I do love those references and like mm-hmm. that vibe is definitely present in Hell Divers too. But I'm not like dude like the whole like uh, service games like not usually my thing. This is the first service game that I think has ever like actually grabbed me and like had me like wanting to play more of it. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So I cleared that side quest off my Skyrim list. Next, I got Ultra Street Fighter Four, bro. And why? Because I was listening to the homie Mikey, who's got O and Two Heroes mm-hmm. podcast, and the yeah, homie Rick, about. who's got Pixel Project Radio, and they were talking about different fighting games. I was like, man, I haven't played a fighting game in a long ass time, and Luke hates them, so I'm not going to be able to rope. I, I could rope <laughs> you into one for the pod, but, so but I'm already pushing, so much, dude. dude. I'm already, I'm already pushing my boundaries, making you play crunchy Game Boy games. So I'm like, oh, maybe true. I'll wait on the That's fighter. True. Uh, but I was like, I want to get good at a fucking fighting game. So I was like, Street Fighter, I got a little bit of a background. I was going to give Street Fighter a try, but I didn't want to do 
Street Fighter 2 because I want to play something newer, but not the newest. I think they're up to Street Fighter 6. So I, I bought Street Fighter 4 for pretty darn cheap. And it's been fun, man. I got my arcade stick and I've been like getting really good with Ken, who's not like a top tier character. Like he's like he's definitely a popular character. But uh, as far as like tiered fighters go, he's he's all right. Uh, but I'm learning all his moves. It's a lot of fun. I'm getting better against the computer. But that got me thinking about like other Street Fighter games. And like I do have like dude i don't even know how many renditions of street fighter 2 i play online or what hell yeah (laughs) fuck me up dude (laughs) i like how you're like yeah i'm getting pretty good at his computer uh i can finish a match or two and i'm like dude are you gonna play online and get owned or what no i get here's the deal so i've been playing it like i learned to be fair i would i would never (laughs) so i'm getting pretty decent at at uh ken's moveset so and yeah. those cross over to the so all the different Street Fighter games, like the movesets are more or less the same. So like you now that I've learned that I can go play Street Fighter 2 or Street Fighter 3, whatever. And I have so many different versions of Street Fighter 2. And it's mind boggling to me. Now I'll fire up like Street Fighter 2 for Sega Genesis, dude. And the computer fucks me right up. But then you play like you play like Street Fighter uh two on the Nintendo Switch, like the ultimate edition or whatever it is, and it's super easy. Oh, so when you the, played the, Street Fighter as a kid, did you get your ass whooped by the computer or like? Uh, I was OK against the computer. Not great. I mostly played with friends, though. We mostly play just play two players. And I never like yeah. I definitely learned some movesets, but like I never like learned full movesets. Games, and everything. It was always just you're the guy that knows it or you're the guy that's just trying to play along and gets destroyed. So, yeah, yeah, I never yeah. really well, had we, a good relationship with like somebody who either was not going to get creamed by me or not going to cream me. There was never, there was never an equal fight. <laughs> That's part well, of the reason I never got into it. We didn't really play. We didn't really have fighting games in our house, even when we started getting our systems and stuff. So like you and I didn't play against each other. We played sports games against each other. And when I play these fighters, like I would play at other homies houses and they own right. the game. So they were doing what I'm doing now. And they would like learn movesets and they would pretty, usually just fuck me up. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm trying to learn a couple characters, so I so I got them in my back pocket when people try Dude, to. Dude, I think me. Street Fighter. I don't even think I know the Street Fighter people. Ah, you'd recognize them, dude. They're such part of the I'm culture bad, now. But like, if you told me Street Fighter versus Mortal Kombat versus a uh, Virtua Fighter versus what's the other? Mm. One? We might have to explore this down the road, dude. Uh, but let's keep checking off these side quests, bro. I got yeah, a couple got, more. Yeah. Uh, I think we made it known that we gave up Game Pass, man. We're back off that shit. Uh, but there was a yeah. couple games that, as a collector and owner of the Xbox Series X, I was like, these are quintessential games that I want on my Xbox. And for me, that Starfield, Halo Infinite, and Horizon, or Horizon, Forza Horizon 5. <laughs> I ended up buying those three games on all really nice discounts, physical copies, mm, nice. except for uh, Forza, because that is cross-play on my PC and my Xbox. And I've I've got that wheel, bro. So like I needed to have that game. Mm-hmm. But uh, I've been playing all those games. It's interesting because even though I enjoyed like little bits of those games that I've played, I never put super much time into them because there's so many other games when you're doing Game Pass. I've been having a lot of fun, like playing a bunch of Halo Infinite and playing a bunch of like just doing some racing. And I haven't I haven't put a bunch more time into Starfield yet. But like I'm looking forward to it, dude. It's it's interesting when you remove Game Pass. And you're able to start to focus on some of these other games. Yeah, I feel that. Never been a car guy either. Racing games is just as just as bad as my fighting game <laughs> blind oh. spot. But Forza so is not, sick. So. The Forza is pretty yeah. cool, dude. Yeah, and it's like it's also just bad. vibe. Like I'm not very good at it yet, so it's like it's this beautiful game too. So it's just kind of fun to drive around in. And uh, the last side quest that I'll mention, second to last, because then I'll kick it off to you. But I got myself a new toy, bro. It's the the FP GBC kit. So that's Funny Playing's GBC kit. I mentioned earlier the Analog Pocket, which is this cool like modern Game Boy. So Funny Playing is a company that does IPS screens, or basically these backlit screens that you can mod your Game Boys with. But okay. they came out with the FPGA. Hence the uh, well, we won't go into the weeds, but if you guys want to talk about there, French, brother, we're if you guys there, want to talk dude. about some crunchy shit, hit up that Discord. <laughs> we're and in I the weeds, you about some FPGA technology. The tree. <laughs> uh, but Discord, uh, dude. dude, funny playing. Put out this kit, so it's a it's a DIY like do it yourself like build your own 
Game Boy, essentially. So it's all their hardware. It's not actual Nintendo hardware, but it's FPGA. So it's made to like hardware made to emulate the actual Game Boy or whatever. And you put it together yourself. And like, I got stories about that, but I won't get into it. I'll tell you that the final product is pretty cool, dude. It's like it's and it costs 70 bucks all day. Like you end up buying it or 70 bucks and then another 10 to get the shell and stuff. So $80 for a machine that is basically a one to one Game Boy Color. Like that's a pretty good deal these days because if you're about to draw money into have someone to mod a Game Boy Color for you, like air upwards of like depends on where you get it, but you can end up spending anywhere between two hundred, three hundred dollars. That's crazy. And the analog pocket that I mentioned, I think, goes for like two twenty or something like that. So this is a very like affordable, uh, affordable way to to get your Game Boy on if folks are interested. Let's go play Pine Creek on it, dude. Fuck yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. And then the last. Side quest is to do a little myth for us, dude. I'll kick it off to your side quest, but I want to bring up that we've been getting our our multi. It's my it's my multiplayer era, dude. It's my mm-hmm. online gaming era. A little myth for us. It'll never be my multiplayer era because that goes to Battlefront Two and all the couch co op back mm-hmm. in the day. But I got what you're saying. Uh, myth force online era then. <laughs> yeah, right. Myth force is tight. Uh, I just want it to be so much more polished. But you know what? When it's not dropping us from our match, uh, yeah. <laughs> we are the worst, and it's hilarious. And I remember some rando came in and carried us and was like, who are these clowns? <laughs> and uh, it's us. Hi. Hopefully you're a fan. Uh, Myth Force is cool, though. I like the Saturday morning cartoons. I'm going to kick off, though. I've been in the my own... I can't make fun of your crunchy shit, because I've been playing this game called Foundation, and it's still in early access. And I bought it when I like somewhere around when I got my PC. So like three, four years ago. Oh, you've had this for a while. Yeah. Um, I came back to it because that's kind of the fun of early access games is sometimes you come back a few years later and they've got all this quality of life stuff or like different systems. So in this one, you start as this little medieval, I guess, township. But you're like five, six people. And it's an organic city builder, so um, it's not on. It's a gridless organic city builder, so you okay. paint areas like if you want them to take down these trees, you paint the extraction area, and you build like a lumber camp, and then you assign people the job. Uh, so, long story short, dude, is that you get all these production chains going. You're growing your village. You're building these cool structures. They kind of have this cool like free build thing for like certain key buildings like taverns churches monasteries uh, military forts and your manor and you, so you have like some design stuff so i should actually post some screenshots or at least send you some uh i built a pretty gnarly little community on a hilltop right now overlooking a river gorge and uh, it looks pretty fucking dope dude and we got a pretty nice. large population and it's scary because i'll start at like seven o'clock and i'll look over and it's like 10 And I've been sitting (laughs) hunched over like a foot and a half from my screen, like for three hours straight uninterrupted. Uh, It's bad. You're back on your PC gaming life, dude. You haven't given that gaming map top any love for a while. Yeah. So like, this is the type of game. This is the reason I even have a PC is for games like that. So that's been fucking sick. Uh, I recently, if if it's on sale, um, still go grab it. But if it's not, go wishlist it. But Suzerian or Suzerain or I don't know how you pronounce it actually, but it's like a social studies term, so it's actually embarrassing that I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, fuck it. It's like this Cold War Soviet or you're like this small country and you got like these different you're like become the president. And it is the only game I've ever played like it. It is like a role playing narrative politics visual novel hmm. decisions game and it's fucking if cool. i was gonna take a crack i'd say suzerain i think that's right the only other place i've run into it is in civ so i know it's like an actual term okay um but it's it's engrossing and i like i've been trying to read more this year because <laughs> you know it's still early in the year so i still feel guilty about my new year's resolutions so like this has been a really fun like new type of game for me where i'm like making all these weird decisions and they're like i got these factions trying to get me to like have like a communist planned economy 
and I got like the military who's like super worried about like one of my aggressive neighbors encroaching on my space and they want me and everyone wants me to give them a fucking shit to the budget and there's all these things going on and it's really fucking cool and it's really fucking nerdy and yeah a social studies teacher would play this fucking game <laughs> <laughs> so it's cool I'd like to do a little bit more on it but I think but you said it's graphic novel or is it like how many how much decisions are you making like visual novel it's a lot of decisions oh, yeah. um okay and i would like to do some research once i see how a full playthrough works out as far as like mm. the different branches and how impactful it is but i, I think it's very impactful this choices you're making um, that's cool maybe so i'll check it know, out dude when you told me it was well, like a visual novel i was like <laughs> no thanks <laughs> yeah uh it's it's like a lot of reading though it's a lot of like setting the scene and it gets hard playing with on your steam D. yeah and it's like all these different made up countries like you know it's pretty obvious like one country is pretty much a facsimile of like america one's a soviet union i think one might be like china or something like that and you okay. just have all these different factors and it's hard to like for a while it's hard to pick up because it's all fake names of stuff so like new proper nouns are always very confusing when you're playing a game uh so that's a little disorienting but i think it's really really cool so i've been really into that and I've been really into foundation and those are two to point out. And I had to match your niche grubby fucking all the way in the weeds and the bushes in the jungle. perhaps <laughs> type shit where I guess no one wants to hear what we have to say. It's like, here's my old new game boy games. And I'm like, no, I am my social games. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's what I got for you, man. I can dig it. Yeah. Do you, I don't know. You, I think you might've sold me on Caesarian dude or suzerain. Suzerian. <laughs> yeah, Suzerian. Su- 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 I know I'm not the only one that likes it. It's cool. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to look up the meaning. A superior feudal lord who fealty is due. All right. Didn't All think right. That out. Or overlord. <laughs> um, but yes, it's, well, I can it's dig really it, man. cool and it's really unique. Well, I've, I've got you roped into... Uh, Gave a couple hours to a game called Dedeus, another game that I'm not sure how that's pronounced. <laughs> it's another Game Boy joint. So we're going to try and knock that one out this month. But do you have anything lined up for next month? Nope. Mysteries. Oh, I better hit that Discord then to find out what we're playing for in June. Yeah, it's always so disorienting because we, <laughs> but yes, it would be for June. Or it would be May. No, it would be May. Because we're in April now. Yes. So it's May. It's always so disorienting. <laughs> right. So the so the, hit that Discord for the May game. You can access the Discord by heading to our website. That's low5gaming.com. There's also a bunch of links to our, our social medias, etc. Holler at us. You can also email us. Send us some email. Ain't nobody sending me any email lately, and I want to answer some emails. <laughs> please um let us know how you would run my little struggling economy up from the ashes of the recession <laughs> uh thanks so much for listening to everybody big virtual hugs to y'all give us that rating if your podcatcher allows ratings it helps for our our reach also gives me a nice little nice little uh serotonin, serotonin boost, boost when i see that you gave a little five star rating if you don't like the podcast, I'm not sure why you stuck around this long, but don't That's tell true. us about it in the ratings. Put on some <laughs> house shoes. You could if you really want to, I guess. Yeah, put on some <laughs> house shoes and listen to our pod and, and enjoy yourself, man. Till next time. Peace, there bro. Peace. Peace.